I've briefly looked at Battlefront's SU-25 Frogfoot plastic kit in the alternative aircraft video I did a while ago, but it's worth taking a brief look at this kit in its own short video. So join me as I look at Battlefront's plastic SU-25 Frogfoot for Team Yankee. This is TSBX-20 the SU-25 Frogfoot Aviation Company box set for Team Yankee. This plastic kit replaced Battlefront's earlier resin and metal kit. The plastic in this box is from the 144th Scale Academy SU-25 Frogfoot model kit. Battlefront have licensed existing plastic kits from a number of scale aircraft manufacturers for the changeover from resin to plastic. Frogfoot provides fixed-wing ground attack in support of Soviet and Warsaw Pact forces in the game. Unlike other aircraft which are ground attack variants of existing fighters, Frogfoot was specifically designed for close air support. It's a single-seat, twin-engined aircraft with wide, shoulder-mounted wings. Each wing has five weapon hardpoints, meaning the Su-25 can carry a lot of ordnance. The twin-engine design also allows the aircraft to keep flying if one engine is hit by ground fire or a missile. The cockpit is contained within a titanium-armoured tub to protect the pilot. The armour is rated to withstand projectiles up to 20mm. Dive brakes are mounted in the wingtip fairings. This slows the aircraft for diving strafing runs. The internal armament is a recoil operated dual barrel 30mm cannon mounted inside the fuselage under the nose. Ammunition belts are usually loaded with a mix of armour piercing tracer and high explosive incendiary rounds. This gives gun attacks some explosive and fragmentation effects as well as penetration of vehicles and other armoured targets. The Su-25 can carry a wide array of stores, including bombs, rockets, missiles and even more 30mm cannons mounted in gun pods. It can drop most of the FAB series of freefall bombs in the Soviet arsenal, including cluster bombs and retarded munitions. Russian bombs tend to use parachute retarding mechanisms, as opposed to the fins widely used on US munitions like the Mark 82 Snake Eye. Frogfoot can also fire unguided rockets. It's commonly armed with the UB-32 rocket launchers, with 32 57mm free flight unguided rockets. But it can also carry the heavier S-13 122mm rockets in 5 rocket pods. The 240mm S-24 rocket is so large that single munitions are mounted directly onto the underwing weapons pylons rather than being fired from a launcher. The blast fragmentation warhead on the S-24 can cover a large area with over 4,000 fragments, some of which are large enough to penetrate more than 25mm of armour. However, firing this heavy rocket puts a significant strain on the airframe, with several accidents reported during salvo firing. 500 kg general purpose bombs are now the preferred primary armament. Frogfoot can also fire a range of TV and laser guided munitions using optics mounted in its nose. This includes the KAB 500 KR TV guided bomb, as well as the KH 23 and KH 25 family of laser guided missiles. This footage seems to show Su 25's ripple firing KH 25 missiles with the first guiding direct to the target while the second missile loops up before taking a plunging attack profile. Su-25 Frogfoot entered service in 1981 and has seen action in Afghanistan, Chechnya, Georgia, Syria and Ukraine. The type has also been widely exported. Let's look at the plastic. Each kit comes on two sprues of light grey plastic, as well as a canopy sprue and some resin KH-25 air-to-surface missiles. I mentioned before this is a scale model kit rather than a miniature designed for wargaming. That's reflected in the parts count. There are a lot more parts here, and a lot more small parts than you'd expect for a miniature. There are also a lot of parts you won't end up using, like the undercarriage and the cockpit internals. You either won't need them or you won't be able to see them. The first sprue has the fuselage parts, engine nozzles and undercarriage. The fuselage comes in two halves, split top and bottom. There are recessed panel lines and open wheel bays underneath. You might need to do a bit of sanding on the fuselage so there's not a visible join here. The engine parts include separate intakes and exhaust nozzles. You need to be careful to get the intakes on the right way up to avoid gaps and fit issues. 
The exhausts have flat spots that should butt up against the fuselage, so watch for this when gluing them in place. The small nose piece has the flattened section on the front for the laser targeting system. There is a cockpit interior here, but in the Battlefront version of the kit the cockpit is opaque. You could still build the cockpit into the kit, but it wouldn't be visible. You will need the wheel well doors to fill the bays on the fuselage parts, but a wargaming aircraft on a flight stand doesn't need the undercarriage and wheels. More bits for the bits box. The second sprue has the wings and weapons. Frogfoot has wide, narrow wings. This leaves lots of room for weapon hardpoints with five weapon stations under each wing. The other smaller wings are the two horizontal tailplanes and the large vertical stabiliser. The plastic kit comes with a lot of weapons. Each SU-25 model comes with six rocket launchers. The UB-32 rocket launcher is standard, but these are the smaller UB-16 versions with only 16.57mm unguided rockets. There are also two freefall bombs. However, while these plastic bombs seem to have stabilising fins, they lack the characteristic accompanying rings. Nearby are some of the small detail parts that mark this as a scale model. The two long probes are fitted on the nose forward of the cockpit. I'd think twice about fitting these to a wargaming kit myself. They'd just be too fragile. The other plastic parts here are 800 litre long range fuel tanks. These are usually fitted under the wings on the innermost pylons. So that's the kit parts on the main sprue. That leaves us with the canopy and the additional weapons. On the Academy kit this is a clear part, but Battlefront mould this in standard styrene. The convention for wargaming aircraft kits is opaque canopies. The shape of the canopy is pretty good. The same can't be said for all of Academy's 144th aircraft kits. The MiG-23 and F-16 kits are notoriously bad. Battlefront also includes some additional weapons. These are KH-25 laser-guided air-to-surface missiles. Good in Team Yankee for taking out heavier armour. NATO reporting name for this missile is the AS-10 Karen. The missile has cruciform canards and fins, and the parts are cast in Battlefront's new Sciocast flexible resin. You'll need to attach these with superglue. There are eight missiles here, but this is the number included for a pair of aircraft, so up to four each. Battlefront also give you a flight stand for each aircraft. You're meant to glue this collar onto the underside of the aircraft's fuselage. Frankly, this is rubbish and I wouldn't trust it to hold. My solution is to take a great big drill bit and drill a hole in the fuselage. Here's some old footage of me doing it to a Sturmovik ground attack aircraft for Flames of War. Start with a 4mm pilot hole, then use a 6mm bit to widen it. Make sure you drill the hole on the centre of gravity of the kit. This will make it naturally sit level. You could even glue a rare earth magnet up inside the aircraft if you wanted to make sure it stayed on the stick. But I haven't had any problems with mine. I don't want to spend too much time looking at the stats for the Su-25 on the table. It's hit on a 3+, plus, so fairly standard for Soviet troops in Team Yankee. The armour protection, twin engine design and other survivability factors are reflected in the 4+, plus aircraft save. This is better than most aircraft and puts it on a par with the Mi-24 Hind. The weapon stats start out with the KH-25 air-to-ground missile. It has a 28-inch or 70-centimetre range, but also has a minimum range of 8 inches or 20 centimetres. You can't fire the missile if you're too close. Rate of fire is only one, but it has a stonking 27 anti-tank and a 2-plus firepower. This will defeat most armour, and if it penetrates it will likely kill. The missile gets the brutal, guided and heat special rules. Brutal means infantry and unarmoured tank teams must re-roll successful saves when hit by the KH-25. Guided means there's no to hit penalty firing the missile at targets over 16 inches or 40 centimetres range. And heat means the target doesn't get an increase in armour protection over 16 inches either. Next up is the dual 30mm internal cannon. This has a short range of only 8 inches or 20 centimetres. Rate of fire is 3 with anti-tank 7 and a 5 plus firepower. This won't cut it against the front or side of most tanks, but is good against lighter vehicles and infantry teams. It also has the anti-helicopter rule, so you can use Frogfoot to chase off enemy attack helicopters. The final weapon option is unguided rockets. These are a one-shot weapon, so you'll need to choose when to use this. As an artillery attack with a salvo-sized template, this attack is best against troops in the open. 
Even if it doesn't get kills, an artillery attack can pin anti-tank guided missile teams, possibly preventing them from firing. The 57mm rocket barrage has a range of 20 inches or 50 centimetres, with an anti-tank of 3 and a firepower of 6. The main problem here is the Soviet Su-25 has a 5 plus skill rating. This is going to give you trouble ranging in for a salvo attack. You're unlikely to range in on the first attempt, and might not range in at all. So rockets give you a big boom, but also a big risk to try the bombardment. So that's Battlefront's Su-25 Frogfoot for Soviet and Warsaw Pact forces in Team Yankee. At just 3.5 points each, these are an affordable inclusion for your force. The AT-27KH-25 missile can handle any tank, and will force your opponent to include decent air defence in their formation. However, keep in mind that you might struggle to get the rocket salvo happening with Soviet training and skill levels. The 4 plus aircraft save makes Frogfoot more survivable than most other aircraft in the game. It's built to go low and take a beating. But the plastic kit is a scale model and takes more time to build than a purpose designed wargaming piece. Not a deal breaker for me, but it does add to the workload to get them onto the table. The upcoming Su 22 fitter is an alternative aircraft. The basic fitter airframe clocks in at just over 1.8 each, but replacing the heavy rockets with KH-25 missiles is an additional 3 points per pair of aircraft. This makes fitter 5 points for 2 or 11 points for 4. Still cheaper than Frogfoot, but you only get the standard 5 plus aircraft save. With the increase in tank armour in later releases of the game, either of these aircraft are going to be useful for making sure your forces have some high anti-tank assets on hand. I hope you enjoyed this look inside the box for the Su-25 Frogfoot. I'm certainly looking forward to building mine. Thanks for watching. See you next time.